shadows step out of the grave break into the wild and don't be afraid run into wide open spaces races waiting for you dance like the weight has been lifted Graces waiting where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom, there is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of his love. For the spirit.
morning. Hallelujah. That part of the song that says, dance like the weight has been lifted. The word tells us that the battle is not ours. We don't have to worry about it. It belongs to the Lord. So when we dance like the weight has been lifted, it's all of that baggage, it's all of that fear, it's all of that turmoil, it's all of that feeling yucky. All of that. We just lay it at the cross and we walk away knowing that what he has begun, he will finish in your life and in my life.
as all of our lives have been interrupted this year with this virus not some of our lives all of our lives have been interrupted and with this interruption the enemy would have us focus on the negativity the enemy would try to hinder us and paralyze us with fear but in the midst of the interruption what is God saying about this and what is God trying to do with his people with this interruption now because throughout the Bible whenever there was interruptions in people's lives in the midst of the interruption there was opportunity there was opportunity there was there was opportunity there was a blessing in disguise within the interruptions what I'm trying to say is with this interruption that we have been dealing with great opportunity is here for us and what is God saying in this hour what is God trying to do with his people well I believe James chapter 1 lets us know and I believe this is a word here for us in verse 2 consider it pure joy my brothers ah watch this whenever Mary, consider it pure joy and then he goes on to say my brother whenever you face trials of many kinds he's saying was there when there's interruption like this consider it pure joy what what what, what? whenever you face trials of many kinds Amen. because you know watch this the testing of your faith develops perseverance this is a time where God is trying to strengthen his church Amen. with this interruption this is a time that God is revealing to us our heart where is our faith because it's easy to shout and praise God when everything's going great but what about when there's an interruption what what when there's an interruption of great magnitude is our faith still consistent is our faith still strong in the Lord are we still waking up in the morning in the midst of the interruption with the same shout that we had before the interruption Ooh. it's kind of like this is a time where it's letting us know where we're at in our relationship with God and he goes on to say it's times like this where your faith develops perseverance perseverance must finish its work so that you may be watch me now mature yes. and complete not lacking anything this is where God is trying to get us yes. he's trying to bring us to a place of maturity yes. Yes. A, a, a place of maturity and a place of who wants something like who wants this not lacking anything hallelujah Amen. I'm that's right that's right not lacking anything this interruption god is using if we allow him to bring us to a place of maturity so in the future with future interruptions we will stand firm we will not pull back 
we will not complain we will not allow fear to have residence in our house in our lives he's trying to bring us to a place of maturity lacking not lacking anything where no matter what's going on around us our faith is consistent our shout is consistent our joy is consistent our love for others is consistent our peace is consistent Amen. our patience is consistent our kindness is consistent <laughs> maturity I'm talking about maturity here yes. Hallelujah. our goodness is consistent our gentleness is consistent yes. our self watch this our self-control is consistent uh, I just said something so when there's other interruptions we don't go back to where God brought us out of for God says in Psalm 81 10 for I am the Lord thy God that brought you out of Egypt now open wide your mouth and I will fill it he's trying to bring us to a place where we lack nothing and when interruptions come we don't go back to the place where God brought us out of. When the pressure's turned up, when the fire's turned up, when all hell's breaking loose all around us, we don't go back, we press in even more. Consider it pure joy. looking at this the wrong way for some of us this is a blessing in disguise this let me say this let me go a little further this is a wake-up call for some of us this is actually waking some people up that thought they were okay and now realize I'm not okay I need to get some things right that's a blessing in disguise Watch me, I'm going to mess us up here this morning and watch it home. Thank God for the interruption. I refuse to let the interruption. I refuse to let the interruption pull me back, take me out, paralyze me with fear, and look at it from a world's point of view. But I'm going to look at it from heaven's point of view. And what the enemy meant for evil, God is going to turn around for good. That's the way I'm going to look at it. I'm going to look at it. With pure joy that God is the author and finisher of our faith. That he is in control. He is on his throne. He's still God all by himself. And God is helping some of us wake up and, 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 and get right with Him. He's helping some of us go from a place of childlike faith. And when I mean childlike faith, don't get this mixed up because He says we need to have childlike faith. When we pray, that, that faith, that pureness. But I'm talking about going from being a child to being a mature Christian, an adult. Where it's not like 10 years later and every time there's an interruption, it, it messes with us and it, and it pulls us back. And we go back to doing things that we did before and he's trying to bring us to a place of maturity. So when, we, when we're around others, with hopelessness and fear and questions we're able to have the shout we had in the in the times of blessing that we're able to be that light 
that, 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 that anchor of encouragement to others around us. Even though the interruption is real, we're able to say praise the Lord. I said we're able to say praise the Lord. We're able to continue to do the next right thing and recognize the opportunity of the moment that this is the greatest hour to reach people for Jesus. People are hurting out there. People are hurting out there. So my friends here this morning watching at home, God is working. God is in control. God is sharpening us. God is preparing us. God is maturing us if we allow him to. So when we come out of this interruption, we're wiser, stronger, more on fire for him. More surrender to him completely so we can do the work that he has called us to do. This interruption, God says, consider it pure joy. You know why? Because, because it's, it, many of us are getting the revelation and, it, and it's getting our attention that how temporary, how temporary, you may be seated, how temporary, how temporary. How temporary. The things of this world are. The Bible says what's seen is temporary. What's unseen is everlasting. How quickly things come down. How quickly things could be eliminated. How quickly an economy can go from being great to disastrous. How quickly. How quickly. But the one sure thing that we can be sure of is that Jesus Christ died on the cross for us, rose from the grave. We serve a resurrected Lord and Savior that God is on his throne and those who call upon his name shall be saved. The one thing we can be sure is that our citizenship is not here, but it is in heaven. That we know that we know that we know that, that, that we're not stuck, but we're on our way. We have a hope. We have a future. That can never be shaken because 2,000 years ago, Jesus said, it is finished. This interruption, how fragile things are around us and and the Bible says, what is a prophet a man to gain the whole world but to lose his soul? The whole world. Consider it pure joy. Whenever you face trials of many kinds, he's saying this is, this is in the midst of it, this is a good thing. If you allow me to move in your life, if you allow me to teach you and help you and guide you. For many here watching at home, this interruption, if it wasn't for this interruption, many of us were busy, busy, busy. And within our schedule of being busy, 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 Jesus wasn't in our schedule. And you might say, wait a second, but I was going to church. You're going to church, but you understand you can be going to church and leaving church and nothing changing. You can go to church because you know the devil comes to church also. Oh, okay. Now, th don't look around. <laughs> the devil comes to church also. So just because you come to church doesn't make you an on-fire Christian and sold-out Christian. And because we can get caught in a routine of things religiosity of of going through the motions singing the songs coming to church and still not have a relationship or talking to God and serving God and and, and serving the people and fulfilling our assignment 
because we're so busy with everything else he was for some he was Jesus was on top of the list when it first started but without realizing it he's on the bottom of the list or in the middle of the list and because of this interruption if it wasn't for the interruption we would have continued living like this a form of godliness but no power this interruption is revealing to many that we've had a form okay are you all right this is just coming right now my spirit a form of godliness but no power power comes from a relationship power comes from a surrendered crucified life where we cruci where we go to the cross every day and crucify this flesh daily and allow the holy spirit to flow through us and said not my will not my agenda but your will your agenda this day where do you want me to go who do you want me to speak to this interruption is waking up people and actually saving many because if it wasn't for it we would have kept on going the way we were living thinking that everything was okay Woo. he's trying to bring us to a place to return back to our first love our first love Jesus and, and and our first love being him and then if we're connect and we're back to our first love then we love what he loves love God with all your heart and love others as yourself love your neighbor as yourself where does that come from returning back to our first love and then we have his heart and we love what he loves and what he loves is souls what he loves is the hurting, the poor, the afflicted, the addicted, and the lost. Are you in this place? Do you see? Does this make sense? Concerted pure joy. This is, this is, this is getting the attention. And it's an opportunity for us to reach others that before the interruption we couldn't even get close to but now they're willing to listen they're willing to talk they're willing to receive we're me and my wife and our little one grace we were we were we went up north for a few days and um and you start to realize that uh, the walls are down and people are hurting and the and they're looking for 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 solutions for answers for encouragement for it's never been easier to share the gospel people we were at, we were at, we were at um, um i hop at the pancake place and our server was talking to us and and as we were talking, then God put on my heart to get some CDs from some of the services here. And one was recover all. You will recover all. You will recover all. And as the conversation went on, and you know, just, I don't even know how it started. We just started. And then one thing led to another. We went to get away for a little bit. Just, just to, just to, just, you know what I mean? It's just, just to disconnect for a moment. But God says, when you disconnect, I didn't, I didn't call you to disconnect from my purpose. <laughs> So we were going for pancakes and breakfast, but God said, if you're available and you're connected to me, the, the, I got work for you to do in that restaurant. Because this isn't about you eating pancakes, this is about reaching others. Yeah, yeah. So we're there, we started talking, went back, came back, gave her the CDs, and she's like, oh my goodness. And she started to open up about how she's been in recovery and 
my wife Sheila starts to share her testimony she started to she's like I, 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 I you got me crying she started crying and then there was another I'm just trying to I'm trying to explain to you this interruption is bringing people getting our a hold of us to remind us what this is all about and then consider it pure joy because it's bringing maturity so we can be effective and finish this thing strong and it's a reminder a reminder of what it's about that Jesus came to find that which was lost he came for the hurting the afflicted the addicted the poor the lost this is what it's all about what's it all about well what's God's will for my life God's will is 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 found in the Word of God you don't go looking for it it's 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 right there you know it's not the will of God is not lost I don't know what the will of God is the will of God for everybody is to come in a relationship with Jesus number two to stay in a relationship with Jesus and number three to bring as many as we can with us to Jesus that's the will of God for all of us and in the midst of doing that God graces us God gifts us to do certain things gives us platforms to accomplish it to reach the world around us God graces us he gives us gifts and as you're doing that and you're following him you end up where you're supposed to be doing what you're supposed to be doing business teaching whatever it might be and then in that place that he places you in whatever that gifting is your gift will make room for you the Bible says the gift that God's given you the gifts that God's given you the 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 the, the gift the ability that he's given you as you are in a relationship with him and you are being a light to everybody else that gift makes room for you and God blesses you so you can be a blessing so then we're up the mountain this is just in a couple days we're up in a mountain and we went a little hike our little one was running around and this is awesome and um, we came down and a lady passed us by when we we're hiking and then we saw her by our car by the truck and Sheila looks at me and she goes you know can you do you think we, we should give her a CD? I think we're supposed to give her a CD. You know, one of the CDs. And, um, and she was talking about the one that, uh, anyway, it was one that we were doing on a TV program. We had that DVD with us. Anyway, and, and, and I turned to her and I go, no, we're not gonna give her a CD or a DVD. This is our time, we're hiking. You know, we're not gonna give a CD. I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say that. But I'm just saying, it's like, isn't it? But that's the way we sometimes fall asleep. And God's saying, you, you're crying out to reach people and accomplish my will. And I'm bringing people right in front of you. But because you forsake your first love, because you've become, you've gotten into an unhealthy routine, because your schedules and your, your personal is, is pushed away and taken out so you can't see and hear clearly the opportunity that is in front of you so God says consider it pure joy during this time because what it's doing it's bringing us back to our senses it's it's bringing clarity and and the confusion and it's bringing us back to a place that we can see clearly again and see the people around us that need Jesus so we so she was like um changing her shoes and stuff and we started to talk to her we're like hey, you know we go we, we have an inner city church and we want to bless you with this and and as we started talking she like had a word it's like about her family or and and as she shared she turned around and said yeah i i lost my brother just a week ago now we could have there were she was next we ran past she went past us hiking we said hi she said hi but then we saw her again by our vehicle. 
Do you think maybe, see what I mean? When we get so busy and so caught up in ourselves that we're missing God saying, look, I brought her back to you. Right next to you. Do you see, do you see, do you see, do you see? Consider it pure joy. Because this interruption has helped me, helped us also get sharpened in the spirit to not miss those opportunities that maybe before if things were going the way they were, man, this is just our time alone. Just trying to just have some time alone with my family. I don't want to talk to anybody. I want to be left alone. But now we see the urgency of we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We need to, if we believe in what we're talking about here, this is what it's all about and then she started to open up about that she had a loss that she lost her brother a week ago and she um, ministered to her and then we prayed for her and then we told her about the church and you know you can look at it and connect with us online and all these things and a seed was planted one in recovery another one had just lost somebody People are hurting. So I say to you tonight, today, consider it pure joy for this interruption. <clears throat> Amen? Because it's bringing a maturity that it's not about us. It's a reminder. It's not about us. It's about him and a world that needs him. And if we make ourselves available and we're surrendered to him, God will bring opportunities in front of us to, to be a miracle in somebody's life, to bring hope to somebody, to make a difference in somebody's life. And in the midst of it, God knows what you need when you need it. Because he who refreshes, remember last week, he who refreshes others will be refreshed himself. So God takes care. When you take care of, so what I'm saying is, because you might say, well, I'm going, yeah, so when you're, you're about the people, about the mission, about the assignment, about the cause of Jesus, and you have his heart, you're refreshing others. And by doing so, and you're, you're making yourself available during the day, you're refreshing others. God knows what you need. So God says, you just keep doing that. I'll take care of the rest. Just be available. You don't have to go looking for it. I'll bring it to you. It'll find the opportunities will find you. You don't have to. Oh, God, I feel it. You don't have to go looking for the opportunities. The opportunities will find you. Resources will find you. The hurting will find you. The afflicted will find you. I'll bring them right in front of you. But are you available to be a vessel of life, a vessel of healing, a vessel of deliverance, a vessel of encouragement? Are you willing? Show yes. Amen. Well, welcome to Sunday morning service. That's good. Consider, man, that's, we could just consider it pure joy, my brothers. And then you think, praise the Lord, consider it pure joy when you get a car. Consider it pure joy when you get a raise. Consider it pure joy when you get a house. No, it's just consider it pure joy whenever you face trials. It's just like, what? It starts off like, yeah. And then it's like, what? That's what that is. That's a, you know, consider it pure. You're thinking when you're reading that, it's like, well, praise God. We're going somewhere with this. Increase, promotion, blessing. But it's, and then afterwards you're like, what? My brothers, when you 
face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of our faith develops for This is where God's, this is what he's trying to do right now in this hour. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Not lacking anything. Because this is what, let's just go a little further. Can we go just a little further here? If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to him. So in this time, Lord, give me wisdom. Give me understanding. Help me. Uh, if there's something that needs to go, Lord, you know, is, is, I'm searching my heart. You know, I'm surrendered. I'm, I'm here I am. Verse 6, but when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. Because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded double man, unstable in all he does so what he's saying i'm trying to bring you to a place where you're not lacking anything a place of maturity so you're not double-minded anymore because a house divided cannot stand that no matter what's taking place no matter what interruptions come in our lives we are not god is trying to deliver us from being double-minded where we're consistent in the good times or in the tough times we're still praising we're still praying we're still witnessing we're still giving we're still doing the next right thing and when someone looks at us they can't tell the difference if we're going through a difficult time or a blessed time or a time of trial because we're so consistent and so mature that we can be going through the craziest time in our lives with multiple interruptions and people couldn't even tell because we're still doing what we were doing before the interruption. And there's, that's, that's where the, and then when we get there, so God's delivering us from being double-minded because a house divided can't stand. You cannot serve two masters. Amen. Welcome to Sunday morning service, Fire and Water International Church. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, we'll see you next week. Well, I just want to say to everybody watching online, welcome. Welcome to the service. God bless you. Thank you. For joining us thank you for trusting us with the things of god god bless you every one of you wherever you might be watching from we're so glad you have joined us and everybody that's here today praise the lord amen as we move forward for the glory of god real quickly um um um, um tomorrow night we do have prayer at seven o'clock praise the lord um um uh, yeah so we don't we don't change so when you know things are good things are bad whatever you know then it's like i pray where well, i don't pray you know i do man we pray it would never change. We, we need to pray all the time. So we're, we're here Monday night, 7 o'clock, and then Wednesday night, Life Groups, um, um, uh, the Lost and Found series. It's the last one. So even if you missed the ones before, it's okay. They're awesome, encouraging. We break into, like, little life groups and stuff, and we discuss and encourage and talk. And it's, 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 it's you know, again, it's a place of victory, and if you're in a place of victory, you can't be in a place of defeat. So no one can say that, well, I don't have anywhere to go. The doors are open here. We're here. So Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. Praise the Lord. And then, uh, and then um, 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 praise God. So I just want to, um, uh, we'll take the offering. Then, then, then we'll worship. And I don't know, I, I have a mess, the message from last night, the, the second part, because I, I, I had two, I think I had two messages yesterday. And, um, and I guess I'm doing the same thing so far today. Amen. Yeah. Um, but we'll see, we'll, we'll see if we get to that. Um, are you all right so far? Everybody comfortable? Everything good? Air conditioning's okay? Do you want us to bring anything for your feet to put up your feet or anything like that? 
Stop it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Where are my soldiers at in this house? Amen. That's the other problem. You know what? During this time, God's trying to deliver us from being comfortable. Amen. We've gotten way too comfortable. Because we live in a microwave society. We want it now. We want it easy. We don't want to work for it. What's God doing with this interruption? He's trying to deliver us from a microwave mentality. He's trying to get some old school in us. Oh, did I say that right? Some old school in Jesus' name. Where we roll up our sleeves and we work hard. We go hard for the things of God. But we've gotten so comfortable. And anything that is uncomfortable or it takes a little bit of work or a little bit of time, we don't do it. If we have to park too far to get to church and walk, I got to go find another church. If they don't have a golf cart to come and pick me up. And I'm talking about someone that doesn't need a golf cart. I mean, we've turned this into like, I don't know what we've turned this thing into. If it's not comfortable, if it's not easy. But I'm here to tell you, God's trying to get us to a point in a place where whatever is important to you, you make time for it. Whatever is important to you, find a way. doesn't matter if the air is working it's not working doesn't matter man I just need to get to where God is and if God's there I'm doing whatever I got to do to get there because I know if my answer is there praise the Lord amen see that that kind of mentality because getting comfortable takes away the fire the passion the hunger being uncomfortable keeps us on our toes. Oh, God, I just said it. Yeah. Being uncomfortable is a blessing in disguise. Interruptions are a blessing. Because you know what it does? It keeps you on your toes. It, it, it keeps you on your toes. Because when you get comfortable, the next thing that happens is you go to sleep in the spirit. We don't want comfortable. We want to, to be effective. And anything worthwhile in the kingdom of God, let me tell you something. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world are diametrically opposed. Everything's set up in this world today. So we don't do nothing and it's all given to us and we don't have to work for it. God says, if you want to get into the promised land, you got to go through the desert. If you want a victory, there's going to be a battle first. If you want to have a mountaintop experience, you're going to go through the valley first. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. One needs the other. Anything worthwhile. Any, if you want a resurrection, there's going to be a crucifixion. Woo! He's trying to get some. He's trying to impart to us. With this interruption, he's trying to deliver us from being comfortable. And he's trying to impart to us some old school mentality. Look at someone and say, don't be lazy. We do the possible, God will do the impossible. But we still need to do something. The way things are going, man, they, this world and this our society, it's got us to a place where it's like, you know what? You don't have, if you want to buy something, they just deliver it. You just order it and they deliver it. You want to eat? They'll just deliver it. You want to, it's like, in other words, they got us to a place. Do you realize, someone might say, I've never been to prison. What do you think is going on today? We're in prison without realizing it. And God says, go into all the world. Be the light. The people are out there, and we're all being. Did I just say that right? It's like everything. So we get out of bed, go to the couch, from the couch, back to the bed. Oh, that was a great day. Oh, 
but what, do you see what's going on? And God's using this interruption to get our attention to say, wake up. Wake up, church. Wake up to what's going on. I told my wife, and I was telling some other people, I haven't changed anything. Now, we made some adjustments in here to have church. But since this thing started, I haven't changed anything. I've been doing what I was doing before and probably doing more than before. And I told my wife when this interruption happened, I hope this is helping somebody. Is anybody just getting, is anybody getting stirred up a little bit? Is anybody just, I told my wife in the beginning, because when the virus started and all this stuff was going on, I go, my call, my call and my assignment demands me to be here. If I am not here during this time, when this thing's first started, we can, if I don't show up now, if we're not doing what we're doing now, I have no business being behind this pulpit after the interruption. If there was ever a time that we need to stand to be seen, speak to be heard, is it not now? And yes, there's an interruption. Yes, there's things that are going on. But at a certain point, you do take a step. You use wisdom. You do your best. And at a certain point, you trust God. And there's work to be done. In Jesus' name. Well, welcome to Sunday morning church. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get through these announcements. It's crazy. It's crazy. But God's bringing clarity to the church. Well, so I want to say again, thank you for joining us. Um, Let's take the offering. Are you ready to give today? Well, to everyone watching at home, thank you. Um, You can give online. As we said before, you can mail it in. Um, or even during the week, you can stop by and drop it off. And like I said, there's some people that, you know, use wisdom, take care of yourselves, and when you're ready, these doors are open. Amen? So that, I, I'm going to say this again. Don't look down on somebody else, depending on where they're at, because everyone's faith is at different places. It doesn't mean they love God less than somebody that came to church. You don't know their, their situation. You don't know what's going on. So let's just be encouraging to one another. So you just keep on connecting with us online. And when you're ready, we are here. And we'll continue to wear our face masks. Amen. So far, so good. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, it, and it's allowed us to all come together and do what we're doing. So thank you, especially for some that might say, well, I, I, I'm okay with that one. But thank you for doing it for the person next to you or the person behind you that's helping them come to church. Amen. Thank you. This is beautiful. Amen. So um, we're going to take the offering. And like I said last night, um, we're we're moving forward. We're not going backwards with this. Um, The TV program we announced, we just, we started, we are translating the TV program. There is an answer that's on AZ TV and on TBN. And now we're translating it in different languages. So we started, we started, we started. And we just completed one and we did it in Greek, the whole program in Greek. So we're sending it, we're we're targeting all of Greece. We're sending it to Greek, to Greece. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, we're gonna go country by country as the Lord's leading us. So we're gonna do the next one and the next one, the next one. We're gonna start sending it out to the different nations in their own language. So I just wanna let just just, prison ministry is going strong we're ministering and bringing hope to them so just know that this is what you're sewn into amen we're moving we're doing we're reaching amen now did we have any video footage of that greek program that we just did yes or no did you ira okay never mind praise the lord we're going to try to show you how but we'll do it another time amen praise god amen amen okay so what we'll do is we'll have the ushers and you guys god bless you at home praise the lord this is exciting i said this is exciting um, um, I'm going to have the ushers. We're going to pray, and they're going to come to you. So um, um, so if, if, if you have your tithes or offering, just lift up your hand. They'll come to you. Praise the Lord. And um, just to keep some order in here, and again, part of our 
part of the safety thing here while we continue to move forward little by little amen this is great the church is filling up again amen this is awesome and remember food boxes after service are available in the parking lot uh, on the other side of the parking lot so make yourselves available if you know somebody that needs food grab a box and take it to them be jesus to somebody amen and again um during the week if someone's watching online and needs a food box just get a hold of us and we'll we'll set a time for you to come and get it or we'll bring it to you we want to make sure that um if someone has a need that we have food and we want to be a blessing and it's here and um, just let us know. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look at some say, that's how we roll. Lord, bless your people here today. Thank you for the opportunity to give here today for your glory, to reach others for your glory and your kingdom. We say thank you for what you're doing in our midst right now. For you are working behind the scenes and you are going to have the final say in Jesus name. And everyone said, amen. Praise the Lord. Go ahead and serve the people and let's worship the Lord. Glory stretches wide across the sky. Behold, a love that never leaves us in the night. Come on. Worship the Lord this morning. Oh 
with one voice, one heart. Come on and praise Him. Praise Him. Praise the Lord. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns with heaven above with wind.
is breaking Hallelujah. Yes, it is. off people's lives right now. Praise you, Father. Glory to your name, Jesus. Yes, it is. Thank you, Father. Stuff is breaking right now. Lord, we thank you for your anointing that removes every burden and destroys every yoke. There's a shift happening right now. Healing's taking place right now. Without anybody even praying with anybody right now, or placing people, praying, laying hands on anybody, people are being delivered right now. Yes, yes, God. You're like, what just happened? God just set you free right now. Let me, let me do this. Stay right there, you guys. We're going to come back to that. So that's how we're going to finish this thing. My God! Consider it pure joy. Amen. I said, consider it pure joy. We're on the winning team. And he's still on his throne. We're not going backwards. We're going forward. And God's preparing us. So we can be more effective, productive for his glory. You know what this is? What we're talking about this one? Boot camp. And you know, boot camp is not comfortable. But when people finish boot camp, they come out soldiers, trained, strong, committed to the cause. You know boot camp, you may be seated, just for a minute, you may be seated. Boot camp, I said this a while ago back, you know what they do in boot camp, when you go into the army and you enlist, what they do is, it's, it's, it's set up, it's, it's, it's set up to tear you down, to get out all your way of thinking and doing from the past. It breaks you down, so then they build you back up into a soldier. It's built to break you in a good way and to impart into you what they're trying to get to you to be an effective soldier. Their thought process, the mission, the cause, they prepare you, they strengthen So when you come out, you're ready. You're ready for battle. You're ready for every situation that arises against you. And you stay committed to the cause. Man, I'm, where are my soldiers at? Watch this. Okay. Watch this. So, so as we're, we just said what we said, conserve pure joy, what God's doing. Anyway. And I want to encourage you with this, because I said this last night, but I, God was just getting a hold of me right now that, that, that as I release this right now, that there's great opportunities, great blessings um, that are in your future as a byproduct of, of this. Watch this. I'm just going. I'm going to share this story. Um, and, and just in, you don't have to turn there. I can just read it. First Kings, um, 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 chapter 17, and um, starting in verse 7. Sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. I don't know why I'm sitting here reading it like this. <laughs> And then Cager prayed for me earlier, and, and you prayed, and he prayed that he, that he, just, that he, that he, he prayed, and God, that he will sweat, amen. And I'm like, so now, now I know what's been going on all these years. He's been praying for me to sweat, and I'm like dripping, I'm, I'm like, like a waterfall here. Is there anybody else out there that's been praying like that, amen? Now, now it all makes, see, everything comes to this, amen, praise the Lord. So sometime later the brook dried up because the Lord had there had been no rain in the land then the word of the Lord came to him go at once to Zarephath at Sidon and stay there I have commanded a widow in the place to supply you with food so he went to Zarephath when he came to the town gate a widow was there gathering sticks he called to her and asked would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink as she was going to get it he called and bring me a please a piece of bread 
as surely as the Lord your God lives. Um, she replied, um, I, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. What? So what we're looking at here, watch this, watch this. Well, and you know, the widow of Zarephath, you know, it, it, you know, if we, if, we, if, we search, if we search the scriptures and, 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 and dissect them, the widow of Zarephath, I, I, I don't know, unless I'm, I missed it, we, we never get her name. So, you know, like in the Bible, like it's just the widow at Zarephath. So she's just the widow. Of Zarephath. She's just this person, you know, just, just, it, she's not like, you know, Ruth in the Bible or, you know, you know, some, you know, because in the Bible you, you, you have, you know, um, um, the, the names are specific and, you know, or, 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 you know, um, David or Abraham or Isaac, um, 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 or, 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 or Ruth, like I said before, it's just the wit, it's just the widow, it's the widow at Zarephath, no name. So that, so that, that just, that just, that helps me understand that God is not a respect of persons before we go any further. She's just. Look at something, just like us. No title. No title. Not a big name. Just the widow of Zarephath. Yes. And the Bible, and her life has been interrupted. Her family has been, there's been an interruption. There's a famine. And it's so severe. Watch this. It's so severe that she's saying, we're going to make a little bit of food right here. And we're going to die. Like, you know, it's like our, our last meal. That's how bad this interruption is to this widow and her, and, her, and her child. But the prophet, the prophet said, watch this, can you make, this is crazy. He goes, he goes, Elijah said, don't be afraid, go home and do as you have said, but first make me a small cake and a bread for me and bring it to me. And make something for you. Okay, before that, you know, can you, uh, as sure as the Lord, God lives, he said, you know, first he goes, and bring me, please, a piece of bread. And she's saying, well, I was going to, I, 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 I'm going to make something for, for, for myself and, and for my child and, and so we can eat it and die. And so this tells me that in the midst of her interruption right here, look at this. I want you to catch this. This is so important. Uh, in, in verse 12, in the midst of the interruption, this is key. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat, eat and die. So in the midst of it, what she had in her possession, she still continued to use. Like in other, in other words, she, she, this lets me know and lets you know that what she did before she was doing right at that point. Like in other words, she, she, it, so she, I'm making some food, which lets me know that this was something she did before. So the interruption did not change what she did the day before or the week before. Well, watch this. Catch this. So the interruption, I'm making some food, which tells me this is something she did consistently, but the food was running out, but she didn't change what she did from before. <laughs> And then the man of God gives her an instruction in the midst of the interruption and says, you know, uh, can you get me something? And then Elijah turns and says, don't be afraid. Go home. Do as you have said. Do what you were doing before. Keep doing what you were doing before. But first, make a small cake of bread for me and for what you have and bring it to me. Then I have something and then, that, that, and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, your God of Israel says. The jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord gives rain on the land. So watch this, verse 15. She went away and did as Elijah told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and for her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. In the midst of the interruption, she was in the process of doing what she was doing before. And then the prophet, the man of God, the word of God said to her, make me something. 
And as you do it, God's going to provide supernaturally. What she did was she gave God something to work with in the midst of interruption. She gave God something to work with in the midst of her interruption, which positioned her for an opportunity in the future for God to show up and show off. What am I trying to say? Keep doing the possible. Keep doing the possible. By doing the possible, you're giving God something to work with. And by doing so, in the midst of the interruption, in other words, she kept on doing what she was doing before. And God is saying, keep doing what you were doing before the interruption. I'm not saying keep doing what you were doing before that was negative or needed some changes. But the things you've learned through the word of God in the past, God says, in the midst of the interruption, you don't put that to the side. You keep doing what you're doing. Keep on worshiping. Keep on praising. Keep on praying. Keep on witnessing. Keep on giving. We don't stop giving because there's an interruption. The man of God said, no. What she was doing was she was sowing into the kingdom of God. The man of God, the prophet of God that had a word. In the interruption, in her lack, she still sowed into the kingdom because she's symbolic the prophet of God's house God's king God's purposes so what in the midst of it so what we have a tendency to do when there's an interruption we 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 adjust or we stop doing what we were doing before and we forget we wouldn't even be in the position we were in before if it wasn't for God and if he brought us this far, he'll bring us the rest of the way. He's the reason we're alive. He's the reason we're not dead. He's the reason that we're not on our way to hell. He's the reason we don't stop doing what we did before. In other words, keep doing the next right thing. And by doing so, as I said, that's it. he's the alpha and he's the omega. He's the beginning and he's the end. So right now, when you do the next right thing now and do the possible, you're giving God something. She gave God something to work with. This is what she had. But, but, and, and by doing so, she gave, she did something. She gave God something to work with. And by doing so, the Lord, God, in your life, and this is what God's saying, is working in the future. You don't see it all right now. But as you're doing the next right thing, you do know right now you're doing the next right thing by being here. And it's not a small thing. Sometimes it's, we think, you know, doing the next right thing, sometimes depending on the size of what the next right thing is, if it's not significant or what we think is significant, then it's insignificant. So really it's not going to move God. But really remember that, that big things come from small places. Um, so small, small things are not small things. So doing the next right thing that seems to be small is not a small thing because big things come from small places. Amen. It was just a little bit of food. It was small. But then what followed released the hands of God to supernaturally provide during the whole interruption. And God's saying, keep doing the next right thing. Keep giving me something to work with, with your worship, your prayer. Keep being an example. Keep work. Keep doing, keep doing what you know is right. And in the midst of it, in the midst of just doing the right thing and trusting him, God will supernaturally bring opportunities, provision, and help to help us along, to bring us through, bring us out for us to move forward for the glory of God. Don't look at the past. The past is over. The past is over. Now we're in an interruption. But don't look too far into the future because, the few, because it's not here yet. So don't, don't miss your opportunity to do the next right thing today by thinking about how it's going to work out in two months. Oh, I just said something. Don't, 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 
so it's like, so don't be, don't remember, a, a house divider, right? Don't be double-minded. So faith is all in trusting God and his word and, and following the word of God in all areas of our lives and following the instructions that he's given us. And in the midst of it, you know, because someone's like, man, but this is a mess that I'm in right now. Well, well God, by the way, let me, say, let, me, let, me, let me tell you something. God specializes in messes. <laughs> What did you know? Did you know? Did you know? Did you did you know that one of his specialties is messes? Yeah. So if you're in one of those situations, you're in a good place. Now give him something to continue to give him something to work with. Do the possible, and God will do the impossible. And how he's going to do it? Don't worry about it. All he wants you to do is follow him. Be all in for him. Keep doing the next right thing. Keep, keep pressing in. Keep doing what you know is right. You don't, you don't stop doing the things you did before. Continue to do what you, with what you have and give everything you have. Give your best to God every single day. And in the midst of it, your miracle is connected to doing the next right thing. But don't look too far ahead. Because if you look too far ahead, too far ahead trying to think, figure it all out, you'll think yourself out of a miracle. <laughs> you'll think yourself out of a miracle. And, and the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and he will direct your path. The greatest enemy to what God wants to do in this hour right now is ourselves. So don't look too far ahead because if you're looking too far ahead and you're way in the future, thinking things, scenarios and things and how and what, God is here today trying to speak to you because he wants to help you today and you miss today's miracle and today's miracle is setting you up for tomorrow's miracle. Today's word is a word that's going to help you for tomorrow, next week and next month. So if I'm so far ahead into the future, God is trying to get a hold of me today but I'm so far ahead in the future, I'm no good today, and I miss hearing God's voice today. And, and as a byproduct of it, I miss the opportunity to do the possible today that sets me up for my blessing tomorrow. Did you get that? I'm going to finish with this. I want to just go back to the song. We're done. Are you okay? I'm just, I'm just being led by the Spirit here tonight, today. Yeah, just... just you know, so when you go home and people ask you what was the message, just say, you know, I'm supposed to make a meal for somebody. <laughs> make the meal. Do the next right thing. And just keep it simple. Enjoy today. God wants, God, there's a miracle today. He wants to speak to us today. Now watch it. So I shared this. I'm going to share this real quick. Let me share this. Let me share this. So last night I shared it. I went in, and, and last night, um, right before coming to service, I went to pick up my wife's ring, because um, um, her wedding ring, and uh, because there was some th th some things they needed to fix, and then they they they, they were you know they, they cleaned it and did some things, and anyway, so I went and picked it up, and I was reminded of the whole process of that ring, and some of you know, some of you don't. When I bought that ring, when I bought that wedding ring, I didn't know Sheila, my wife. <laughs> And, and during that time, I was frustrated. I'm just being real. I was like, man, God, I'm done with this. This is crazy. I've served you. You know, I was going through that whole thing. Uh, some of you are like, yeah, I understand. Others are like, what? Said, Stop it, amen. You know, I'm going to say, oh, praise the Lord. And I just, it was, no, it wasn't like that. I was done. I said I was done. So in the midst of it, I didn't know my wife Sheila at the time. But then um, I, one day I woke up and I'm like, okay. Lord, I need, is this ever going to happen? And, and anyway, so, so all of a sudden something inside of me is like, you know what? I'm going to go to, I'm going to go get, I'm going to go buy a ring. Watch what I was doing. I, I didn't know my future wife, but I had the capability to do something. 
So it, so it was kind of like, okay, if, I, if God brings my wife, then okay, I want to give her a ring, right? So to, to ask her to marry me. So okay, so, so, so even though I don't know her, um, I might as well start the process and let me So what I was able to do, I did the possible is what I'm saying. So I went to the jewelry store and I bought a ring. And as I was buying, I was telling the person, yeah, I don't know. I'm just buying this ring that, you know, I'm just, you know, and I don't know the person I'm going to marry and all this stuff. And I, and I just, you know, and I bought the ring, went home, put it away and didn't know Sheila. On that day, instead of giving up and allowing the frustration and just the things that were the battle in my mind, I got out of the house and I did something that was a good thing. It was a, it was the right thing. It was like, okay, God, I'm going to give you something to work with and I'm not going to pull, I'm not going to give up, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to release some faith here and I believe you're putting this in my heart. So I went and got a ring. I bought a ring and I didn't even know my future wife. And do you realize not too long after I meet Sheila, give her the ring you know she said yes we have a beautiful baby girl obviously praise the lord watch this we went back a little while later for something else on the ring and the guy that sold me the ring we were there and as we're talking i go this is my wife and then he's like and then we started talking about the story and it's like and he remember the story and it's like yeah you're the person that bought the ring that didn't know the person this is the person it's like yes So God used it also for us to minister to that whole store at that moment. Like, who does that? I mean, but what I'm trying to say is, I'm trying to say here today is this. I did, I, I did the possible. I, I made him, I got a, I made him. So when you're worship, when you're here on service, it says forsake not to get in their saints or online right now. You're, you're doing something right now. It sounds small. You're, you're, you're. You're, you're, you're doing something. You're giving God something to work with. And in the midst of it, God knows what you need in the future. And he's already in your future preparing things. So rest. Consider it pure joy. God's got you covered. He's the author and finisher of your faith. Amen. So watch this. In conclusion here this morning. In conclusion. In conclusion. What are you going to do when you leave? You're going to make a meal for somebody. And you're going to go buy a ring. Everything's going to be all right. Can someone say amen? Can someone say amen? Let's stand our feet. Come on. Praise the Lord. Every hand lifted up. Every voice lifted up. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above all wings. The power and love of our God is an awesome God. Yes, He is. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from
around with that one. We're going to pray. If you're in this place and watching at home right now, during this time of interruption, God is trying to get the attention not just of the church, not just prodigal sons and daughters, the prodigals, but also there's people here and watching right now that have never given their hearts to Jesus. And I'm here to tell you, He's your peace. He's your strength. He's your protection. Everything will change by saying yes to Him. Your miracle will start by saying yes to Him because this is what it's all about. God is not intimidated with your sins, but He died for every one of your sins. He loves you. It's not the way you start. It's the way you finish. There's time because you're alive. Get back up. Move forward and be the champion that God's called you to be. The Bible says those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Not 10 ways, 15 ways to heaven. There's only one way to heaven. His name is Jesus Christ. The Bible says one meteor between heaven and earth. His name is Jesus Christ. One that died on the cross and rose from the grave on the third day. Today is your day for breakthrough and turnaround. Your miracle starts today. I don't care how much you've done, how bad it was in the past, how much bad you did in the past, what you even did just to, before even service started, you have an opportunity today, right now, to say yes to the Lord, to say yes to Jesus, and the blood of Jesus will wash you and cleanse you and give you a new start. To my prodigal sons and daughters it's not too late a righteous man falls seven times but he gets back up get back up someone's going to need to hear your story of getting back up multiple times and not quitting your story your miracle today of what today this altar of today is going to be a miracle for somebody else your breakthrough today is going to be somebody else's breakthrough in the future so get back up and let's move forward. Let's continue to do the next right thing and watch what God will do in the future. Consider it pure joy. Let's pray this prayer together. Heavenly Father, I need you. I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. I believe you sent your son Jesus to this earth for me. And those who call upon your name shall be saved. Jesus, I call upon your name. Help me. Wash me with your blood. Renew a right spirit within me. I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart and be Lord and Savior of my life. I surrender all to you. From this day forth, I'm all yours. I believe that you died for me. I believe you rose from the grave on the third day. And today, because you said it, I believed it confessed it that I am saved I'm on my way to heaven and my greatest days are ahead use me for your glory in Jesus name amen praise the Lord God bless every one of you watching online right now you guys have a great day be great for God amen and we'll see you this week Hallelujah.